If you're considering building your own home system lab, you'll probably start with just a couple of devices. Obviously, to connect those devices, you'll need to connect your rollover or crossover cable to the console port in those devices. Now, this is fine and great until your lab grows and you get six or seven devices. Then moving that console cable from one device to another really gets to be a pain in the butt. Cisco has got a terminal access server or access server that solves this problem. Basically, what this unit does is you can connect multiple devices to the server then have one connection between the server and your computer. When you're sitting at your computer and you want to access one device and move to another, you don't have to move that console cable. You just basically tell the server, I want to access this device, and it'll take you there, just as if you had a direct console connection. Cisco has two units, the 2509 and the 2511. They're basically the same, yet they have minor differences, and I'll go into that later. For the sake of this video, I'm just going to be showing you the 2511 device. That is this device right here. And as you can see, it looks like just a typical Cisco piece of equipment, uh, 1RU type of unit. Uh, for the, those of you that love flashing lights in the front, I'm sorry, this has no flashing lights that you can see at night that would be flashing entertaining kids. Now, on the back, on the back we have several ports back here, and starting from my right or your left, are the two asynchronous ports of 68 pin uh, connections and these are for your octal cables and I'll get into the octal cables a little bit further down the line here. Now this is where you actually connect multiple devices to this unit itself. You can have your uh, ASAs, your routers, your switches connected directly to here. And I'll, like I said, I'll show you those cables in just a few minutes. Next to this is your DB15 uh, connector here. This DB15 connector is for your Ethernet connector. And most of you are probably thinking Ethernet, you think RJ45, and how is an RJ45 going to connect to uh, this particular uh, port? Well, that is accomplished with the use of a converter here. As you can see, it's got a DB15 connector on one end and an RJ45 connector on the other end. And it just simply slides into the port. You don't have to bolt it down. Some will lock, but most of them just slide in. They're secure enough, and you can connect your RJ45 directly to this uh, port here. Now, next to this, you have your DB60 uh, serials. This is serial 00 and 01, that is kind of confusing. But these are used basically for your CSU, DSU devices, or modems if you want to go uh, that route. You can also connect to another, another server, terminal server, via a DCE, DTE connection. Now, next to this, you have your two RJ45 connectors here. Now, one of them is an auxiliary, which is like your typical Cisco auxiliary port, like on any other device, used for usually uh, dial-in remote access. And the other is your console port. This is connected directly to your computer when you initially configure this device or for maintenance purposes. Obviously, next to that, you have your power switch and your power cord connection. Now, I was talking to you about those... Uh, Octo cables. I've got one here that I want to show you. Now, as you can see on this end, you have your 68 pin serial connection here. On the other end, you have eight separate connections. This is all one cable. You have eight separate connections here with the RJ45s. Now, this is actually a rollover or console cable, if you want to call it that. It just doesn't have the typical Cisco uh, look to it as being baby blue and uh, flat in, in nature. Now each one of these cables also is numbered, usually 1 through 8. I have seen them numbered 0 through 7, and that can be a pain in the ass when you're trying to configure uh, your multiple devices. But they are individually numbered 1 through 8, as a rule. And these plug directly into the console port on your other devices on your rack. Now as I said, this is a 3 foot cable. There is and I gotta get down here. It is one. It's uh, a monster cable. It's the same thing. It's got your serial connector on one end and your eight RJ45 connectors on the other. Except this 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 bad boy is ten foot long, and this could be a real nightmare when you're trying to uh, do wire management behind your rack. Now let's go and take a closer look at the differences and similarities between the Cisco 2509 and the 2511 access servers. 
We have the 2509 on the top and the 2511 on the bottom. As you can see, they're both identical with the exception that the 2509 only has one asynchronous port, meaning that you can only have eight devices attached to this unit, whereas the 2511 with two asynchronous ports can have 16 devices attached. Other than that, the devices are identical. Well, there you have it. The differences and similarities between the Cisco 2509 and the 2511 Access Server. In my next upcoming video, I will be covering the configuration of the 2511 server. Until then, happy networking.